Some promises and some blessings are conditional and some are unconditional. See what I'm trying to say? That means that you have to do your part and then God has done his part. When you come to Christ, there's certain blessings that's already afforded to you because you give your life to Christ. There's other blessings and promises, my God, that you have to make decisions and be in position for God to bless you. Are y'all with me so far? It's not, it's not just good to just proclaim the promises and being out of order because it's not going to happen. And then we become frustrated believers because we're not seeing the promises manifest in our life. And so as I've been on this consecration, my God, I've been praying. And uh, a couple, about a month or so ago, I was, you know, this book called Boundaries uh, that Janice has in her office upstairs. They just keep leaping out at it, keep leaping out at me, keep leaping out at me. And so therefore... Uh, I was able to talk a little bit about it with just the beginning. My God, when I taught a while back in her in her uh, one of her uh, classes, and but then God brought it back up to my spirit just the other day. My God, to uh, do a series on boundaries. Boundaries has a way of protecting your life, church. And if you was here on Wednesday, my God, I mean Monday night when I talked about the character formation, giving you ten things that uh, when your finances are out of order, how it affects nine other areas of your life. Uh, if you wasn't heard, just see one of the sisters that was or our brothers and they can give you the information. But you have to understand that finances affects everything. Because when you ain't got no money, your attitude is bad. You don't want to talk to nobody. Your thought life is messed up. When you're struggling and bound up, trying to make ends meet, trying to figure out how you're going to feed these kids, how you're going to buy these pampers and so forth, it affects every part of your personal life. That's why God said, my God, where your treasures are, that's where your heart would be, your loyalty, your love. You have to understand, body of Christ, my God, that money tells off on you. You get your money right, it's easy for you to get your life right. And so you got to, we have to find out why do we struggle with gluttony and lust? Because that is the root cause, not the symptoms. The root cause, gluttony and lust. You have to train yourself boundaries when to spend and when not to spend. Just cause you can don't mean you should. I've been teaching y'all that. Y'all heard y'all pastor give stuff across this pool pit because I live by the very things that I'm telling y'all. That's why I'm able to make certain statements because it's evident in my own life. I can do a whole lot of things. I can go get me a guess 500 Mercedes being brand spanking new right now tomorrow if that's what I wanted to do. But what is that going to solve? I got to pay for it after I get it. And I can afford to pay for it, but what did I get it for? What was my motive for getting it? To show something to y'all? Yeah. My Honda 2016 is doing the same thing Amen. that a 2019 S500 will do. <laughs> Just because you can don't mean you're supposed to. Yeah. Boundaries. You got to set boundaries when it comes to your finances. And so we're getting ready to do a series my God, I don't know how long God going to take me uh, on this series, but I'm going to do it until God tell me not to do it. So Ruth chapter 1, starting at verse number 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. It says, in the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. The man's name was Amalek, and his wife was Naomi. The two sons was Melion and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they settled there. Then Amalek died, and Naomi was left with her two sons, the two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman named Oprah and the other a woman named Ruth. But about 10 years later, both Melian and Kilian died. This left Naomi alone without her two sons and her husband. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Naomi and her daughter-in-law, Laws, our daughter-in-law, got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland with her two daughters-in-law. 
She set out from the place where she had been living and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. Father, thank you for the few minutes that I have. Lord, set boundaries, establish boundaries, and help us to submit to the boundaries of your word. Your word, even though there are principles and promises here, Father God, is full of boundaries to protect our lives, not to control, but to protect. You set before us life and death, blessing and curses. Then you told us to choose life. So, Father God, we're going to choose life, Father. Lord, let this series speak into the atmosphere. Father God, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we choose this day to follow you, that we withhold nothing from you, that we're all in, that we are relentless concerning the pursuit and the things of God. We won't shout about the promises. We will live and operate in the promises in 2019. We thank you for deliverance. Save a soul. I'll restore one if it's somebody that's outside of your will on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Naomi and her daughters-in-law, Oprah and Ruth, are caught between a rock and a hard place. Have anybody ever been there? Uh, how many of you might say, I'm kind of dealing with that right now, rocking all place, amen. Oh, uh, God got a word for you. But she's caught in between a rock and a hard place. They are widowed, all of them is widowed. They broke and they in a famine. That's a cold situation to be in. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, they was broken in a phantom that had originally forced them to leave Judah and reach their new home in Moab. But then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Naomi and her daughters-in-law, of course the word of God says, got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. Naomi knew that in Judah life would still be hard for the three widows, especially two foreign ones at that. Mm -hmm. So she gave them a choice. Now, I want to say that right there in my introduction, but it's good to have choices. If you are sitting under the sound of my voice right now and you are in situations in your personal life where you have no choice, no other way of escape, you are in a bad situation. My, my former boss, Eddie Miller, the CEO of Bios Corporation, told me early on when he hired me many, many years ago off in Human Resources, he told me that it's always good to have options in life. You need some options. But your options and your choices need to be godly options and, options and choices. Are you with me so far? So she gave her daughter-in-laws a choice to stay with her or return to their Moabite families. Oprah chose to go back to the security of a Moabite family. That's significant in the story. Ruth chose to stay with Naomi and leave everything she knew. Will you trust them even when you don't understand? Yeah. Yeah. Abraham, get your family and leave yeah. that country. Ah, yeah. yeah. uh, come on, somebody. My God, Ruth, Ruth, Ruth didn't, they didn't know how things would turn out. No, Oprah chose to follow what seemed to be the wise path. What seems she chose to follow what seems to be the wise path. Are y'all with me so far? Mm, thank you, Lord. Let me get my place. Okay. Ruth chose to stay with Naomi and leave uh, uh, everything that she knew. My God, did they know everything was going to turn How everything was going to turn out? No, they didn't. I repeated that for a reason. No, Ruth did not know. No, she did not know. My God, neither did Naomi how things was going to turn out. But in returning to her ungodly family, Oprah, she is never heard from again. So when Oprah chose to go back to the familiar, according to the word of God, she's never heard of again. Are you with me so far? Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord. Ruth and Father Naomi chose God's path. She didn't know where it would take her on her journey. There are some, some things that are required while you're on your journey. So the title of this sermon is dealing with boundaries is uncompromised loyalty. Uncompromised loyalty. Oprah took the what she knew path, the familiar path. Ruth was willing to trust God when she couldn't trace God. 
You saying you want to see what God's going to do in 2019. Are you willing to trust him? When you don't understand his sovereignty, when you understand what he's doing and what he's saying, uh, can you still trust him when he ain't speaking? Yeah, yeah. I said, can you still trust him when he ain't speaking, when he's telling you to be still? See, sometimes God will stop speaking because he wants you to be still and start listening. See, my, come on, somebody. And so, therefore, when we lack trust, if we don't feel like, my God, if we, if we lack trust, if God is not speaking or dealing with us, we think God has forgotten about us. We think some sin is in our life and something like that. Now, sin will hinder God's voice in your life, but sometimes God will stop speaking because God is just trying to train you and I how to follow his will. What do you mean? What I mean by that, if God told you to go this way, that means go that way. And if he stops speaking, then just keep going the way he told you to go. That's where you have to trust God. It's simplistic, but it's profound. If he said go left, then that's what he said go left. He may talk to you. He may walk with you like he walked with the disciples. And then he'll disappear and see if you're going to keep walking. See, God will walk with you, my God, while you, while, while you need him. But then when he want to train you and take you deeper, he'll back up off for you and say keep walking. But some of us will do like Peter and, and turn around and go back to the familiar like Oprah and turn around and go back. You'll never be able to walk with God if you ain't flipping them pages. You'll never be able to walk with God if you don't put a demand on yourself to enter into God's presence and get intimate with God. Prayer brings you to intimacy. And so when God stops walking, my God, you're going to turn left or you're going to turn right because you don't know God's voice. God is trying to train us. But one thing about Ruth, Ruth reminds me of uncompromised loyalty. So put number one on the screen for me. When you're dealing with boundaries, you're going to come across some crossroads. When you're dealing with boundaries. We know in the natural, my God, they have fence lines and, and different type of property deeds and so forth that you have to go down to the county and the state and get dif different licenses and permits and so forth to do certain things and build certain projects when you stay in the housing additions and you got a homeowner association fees and dues. You got all type of red tape that you got to jump through, my God, called boundaries. Mm -hmm. Well, when we reach a crossroad in life, we have to understand some things. We need to discern that we are at a crossroad that's going to affect, write this down, our entire future or our destiny. Crossroads has a way of affecting your future and your destiny. That's why you have to discern when you are at a crossroads in life. You cannot brush off, you cannot sidestep a crossroad. You have to sit down and say, and look at this crossroad and say, okay, what is God saying? What is God doing? Some of you right now has to make some decisions and you're at a crossroad. But don't make a fleshly decision. I'm a teacher. My God. So crossroads affect your future. They affect your destiny. Also, it affects your destiny in God. We need to help. My God, we need to get help to make the, the right decisions. It is important that we not only lead, be not be led by our emotions. Let me lay this foundation. It's important that we not be led by our emotions or fear of our circumstances, but by the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible teaches you and I not to walk by sight, but to walk by faith. Your circumstances, your situations, what you see, what you hear can discourage you. It can produce a natural fear in each and every one of us. That's why your faith has to be anchored in God. That's why your faith had to be anchored on Genesis through Revelations. Because sometimes, like myself, we have made decisions apart from the Holy Ghost. We have let circumstances and situations dictate the decisions that we made. And sometimes we take the lesser before we take the greater. The lesser. We take the less afflicted road. The less afflicted journey. We don't want to go through no thorns and thistles. We don't want to have to deal with no trials and tribulations. And so we do like Lot and we look for the beautiful land. But how many know just because it look good don't mean that it's God? <laughs> Oprah compromised. She went back to what she knew. Ruth said, I'm all in. Ruth burnt all of her plows. She ain't got nothing to go back to. What is the saying? To whom shall I go? You have the words of eternal life. It ain't no shadow of turning. I am going on to see where the end of a saved life going to be like. See, you got to have some mindsets, my God, to keep you pushing in this journey. Mm. We need to get advice from others. Write down Proverbs eleven fourteen. It's going to get good. Eleven fourteen. It says, uh, it says, without wise leadership, our counsel, our guidance, a nation falls. 
There is safety in having many advisors. So if you're at a crossroad tonight, like many of us may be, ask yourself, what type of advice and counsel am I getting? Not only write that down, what type of advice, but who am I getting my counsel from? Who am I getting my advice from? Why is it that Christians tend to run to everybody outside of the church? I'm not saying that you have to be in the church and even be a part of this church and nobody is, uh, other than people in this church is qualified to give you wise counsel or advice. But we tend to run to the familiar just like Oprah and we're getting counsel and advice from people who is not intimate with God. And so they're giving you fleshly carnal advice. And because you're not dusty enough in God's word, you're accepting and I'm not saying that they have to be Christians in order to give you advice. That's not what I'm saying. Are you listening to me? But the Bible teaches you and I to try the spirit by the spirit. Yeah. People can be giving you some good advice, but is it God's advice? Yeah. They can sound good. They can use all those big old words that your pastor can't use, but is they giving you God's advice? Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? You, got, you can't be moved. Remember, we're dealing with uncompromising loyalty. What did God tell you to do? What direction did God tell you to go? See what I'm trying to say? And you got to be willing to stay that course no matter what it look like. You're going to face some obstacles. You're going to have some thorns and some thistles. You're going to have some bridges. You're going to have some things that you're going to have to go through. But what did God say? Do we know that he can keep us? Do you know that he can protect you? Okay, okay. Despite what you and I may think, we don't always know what is best for you and I. In spite of what you may think, pastor don't have all the answers, but God do. Your significant others don't have all the answers, but God do. Your mom and fathers that's still alive don't have all the answers, but God do. What am I trying to say? You need to be willing to go straight vertical. I mean, straight to God when you are at a crossroads. When you have to make some tough decisions, my God, get quiet, get still, do what we are doing now. If you are on this consecration fast, crucify your flesh and get still because God cannot speak to you. Well, he can speak to you, but we're not hearing God when our flesh is too loud. Yeah. We hear the flesh more than we hear the spirit. That's why you got to bring your flesh under subjection. Paul said, I train my body to do what it should not what it wants to. So when you are at a crossroad, when you got to make some decisions, when you need wise counseling, my God, put yourself on some type of consecration, get still, and quit listening to people and start listening to the Holy Spirit. Yes. 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 I'm still dealing with what we talked about on Monday about your personal life. See what I'm trying to say? Because if we're not getting wise counsel, my God, our, our following and listening to godly leadership, my God, it affects our thought life. And now we have hung our hat on something somebody said because we thought that they gave us the right advice. And now we got a wound that God said, I never meant for you to have son or daughter, but you ran to them and you didn't come to me. The Bible says, come to me, all those that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's a sound elementary teaching, but we need to get in the habit of learning how to go to God when you are in a crossroad. Quit running to everybody else. Mm. Jeremiah 10, 23, write this down. He says, I know the Lord that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. We are not able. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's the Lord's will that will prevail. Many of us is frustrated because we're fighting against and kicking against Mother God's will. We're kicking, as the Bible says, against the prick. And it's producing a crossroads in our mind, which is robbing us of our worship. If you follow me on social media, heaviness will rob you of worship. Many of us is heavy because we're kicking. It's what the horses do. And they want to get you up off of my sheep. Get up off. We're kicking. We're kicking. We're kicking. We're kicking against God's will. You're trying to plan your course. And God says, son, daughter, I got a course plan for you. See, when you get in God, it's never now, it's nevertheless not my will, but thy will be done. So when God has told you to do something, and when you're at a crossroad, you got to go with that word that God gave you. 
And you have to anchor your mind and say it's uncompromising loyalty to God's word. That's why you got to have your mind made up that you're going to serve God. If your mind is not anchored in serving God, I promise you, you will be talked out of everything concerning God's will for your life. You can be easily influenced. People, my God, that, 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 does, that does not have uncompromising loyalty, they're not consecrating, they're not reading, they're at church, but they're not doing it. And so, therefore, anytime the enemy want to come whistle like he did Eve, you know, you, you persuade it. Now you doubting. You got what Joyce Myers called in the battlefield, battlefield of the mind, the doubting mind, the confused mind. But see, if you be anchored in God's constitution, meaning his word, and you go back with God's words, that's why the Bible says take every thought into captivity, into the obedience, my God, of God's word. My God, cast it down, cast it down. Everything that goes against, everything that contradicts God's word, you got to cast it down down. If you continue to allow it to go on in your mind, for you know it has set up a stronghold. Stronghold will imprison you. Don't you know we can be alive in our spirit and in prison in our mind? Don't we Christians? See what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Naomi tried to persuade her. We're talking about uncompromising authority. Naomi, Naomi tried to persuade her. Common sense said, stay in Moab, like Oprah did. On the surface, her decision made no sense. But Ruth set her course, regardless of the cost of hardship. Ruth didn't know what God was going to do. She didn't know how she was going to eat. Now, to keep things in context, it was a famine that drove them out of the land. So their people were starving all around them. She didn't know how God was going to provide. She didn't know what God was going to do, but she had already counted up the cost in her mind. Don't you know that you have to count up the cost if you're going to walk with God? When you are, my God, have not counted up the cost, you will compromise. The spirit, I preached years ago, my God, the spirit of compromise, the danger of compromising. Many of us are shipwrecking and compromising all over the country, my God, our souls. We are selling out, my God. To be popular, we're selling out to social media. We're selling out because he looked good and he could pay a bill. We're selling out, my God, for just we're just selling for anything. God said he wants the best for you. My God, you're selling for Ismael's, and God said, I got a promise called Isaac for you. You're desperate for anything. Come on, ladies. Even men. But I know I got to help my daughters. But Ruth had it all settled. settled. She had already settled. There are some journeys you're going to have to take in 2019. You're going to have to purpose in your mind. It's going to have to already be settled. Yeah. Yeah. That no matter come hell or high waters, yeah. I'm going on. Yeah. Yeah. You can't wait till you get in the midst of a storm and try to make your mind up. Your mind got to be made up that no matter what comes your way that you're going on. That's why you got to rest in Psalms 119. It was good for me that I was afflicted. That's why you got to understand Romans 8:28. My God, everything, all things are working together for the good. So you got to be able to pull them. You got to be able to pull those scriptures and put them scriptures in your thought life and prepare yourself for war. It's gonna cost you something to do God's will. It's gonna cost you something to be a professing Christian today. My God, it's gonna cost you something to hear job well done. That's why the Word of God says, "Those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved." Are you purposed? In your mind to endure? Have you made up your mind, my God, that no matter what, my God, brother board, I'm going on? Have you made up your mind? Have you taken on a yoke with Christ said, my God? He said, blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness sake. Come on, somebody. Have you taken on Matthew 5 and 6? He says, my God, my God, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. People, Jesus said, people will hate you because of me. People will dislike you because of me. People going to throw you in jail because of me. People will put you out the synagogue because of me. You got to arm yourself, prepare yourself, as Peter said, for action. This is a war that you're in. Yeah. My God, people are being killed, hung, and crucified, and bored, and sawed asunder, just like they was in the scripture days all over these other countries. Don't think it's not happening in America. It's going to come knocking. My God, you and I are going to have to make a decision one day. I promise you, my God, either choose God or renounce God. Have you counted up the cost? You know why we tend to compromise? Because we haven't made up our mind that, we, that this is what we really want to do. We'll serve God until we force forced to, to make a choice that could cause us to go against God. Why is it so easy for us to go against God? Why is it so easy for us to compromise godly standards and godly principles for worldly standards and worldly yeah. principles? Why is it the first, op the first sign of opposition when it comes to the things of God? We quit. Why? Why do we back up and quit? 
Why do we quit reading when we're going through trials and tribulations? Mm -hmm. But Ruth, my God, on the other hand, not knowing what the future holds, she counted up the cost. She was willing and ready to endure hardship. And if you know the story, I suggest that you read the book of Ruth. But she was certain to face all of that hardship. But she yet chose to trust God. Write that down. Right, choose to trust God. Choose to trust God. Pastor's trying to keep his passion under control. I think well, this consecration got me right where I need to be. We talking about uncompromising loyalty. Listen to what she said. Watch this, Pastor. See, this is somebody I like, and I'm gonna be honest with you. In six o'clock prayer, where well, I prayed during in the afternoon, but then at six o'clock prayer, I even prayed this prayer again. Listen to this, sir. I asked for these type of women in the church. I'm gonna read it to you, Jackie. Jackie. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. This is what Naomi said. I mean, Ruth said, my God, when Naomi tried to get her to leave, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. Ruth said, told Naomi, Naomi trying to get her to go back, go back, go back, girl. I can't, I ain't got nothing for you. My God, I, uh, I ain't got no more kids. I'm too old to have kids. What you going to do? Wait around for me to get pregnant and wait for the kid to grow up? This is what the Bible say. Go on, go on. And the Ruth said, no, 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 no. I'm not going nowhere. Where you go, I go. If you die, I die. That's the uncompromised loyalty. Mm, that's purpose. Purpose. When we commit our lives to God, we choose to surrender our will to his. Don't you know your will gets in the way of uncompromised loyalty? Your will consists of mind and emotions and will. That's your soul, mind, will, and emotions. You and I got to bring our soul, which is mind, will, and emotions, into alignment with our spirit. A lot of us, when we call out of the world, our soul is on top of our spirit, and our spirit is laying dormant. But when God breathed and you accept Christ, your spirit come alive, now you have to allow God, this is where Romans 12, 1 come in, to start transforming you and bringing your soul down and bringing your spirit up and putting your soul, your spirit on top of your soul. Right. And when your spirit is controlling your soul, when you're at a crossroad, you think Christ first, not flesh first. When someone has wronged you, my God, you think godly thoughts before you think negative thoughts. That don't mean we don't stumble, we don't fall, but for the most part, you're not a defeated Christian. Yeah. When your spirit is dominating your soul. Anytime, my God, you start doing stuff out of God's will, start getting ahead of God, my God, then you know your soul is on top. Here's another thing. When Abimelech left, according to chapter 1, a severe famine came upon the land, so the man from Bethlehem and Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab. One thing that happened to the man of God, he died outside of God's promise. When he left, he took his family. He took his son. Mm -hmm. He died, and then his two sons died. Because he let the famine drive him out of position. <laughs> he let the famine push him out of purpose. He let the famine get him ahead of God. He let, he let that what was used to be comfortable, that became uncomfortable, force him to move. And so he made a fleshy decision instead of a spiritual decision. See what I'm trying to say? Are you letting pressure force you out of purpose? Naomi did a couple more things. Put point number two on the screen. She was diligent, and she, was, and she also showed righteousness. Are you listening to me? She was diligent, and she also showed righteousness. Diligence, it takes diligence to do the will of the Father. Are y'all with me so far? Let's look at what Ruth said. Ruth possessed two character traits that made her stand out. The first one is diligence. Picking the scraps, this is what she did. She was picking the scraps from the harvest. And this is demeaning, it's dispirited, and demanding work. She had to go around the harvesters and humble herself and pick up the scraps. Listen to me. Remember, when she left, 
to follow Naomi. She didn't know what God was going to do. She didn't know what God was going to take her. She, she was she counting up the cost. She was prepared for the hardship. And so now here is the woman of God in the hot sun, my God, falling behind people picking up scraps. Don't despise small beginnings. But a part of God's purpose and plan to position her for the free, for, 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 for financial uh, breakthrough, my God, she had to labor in the mundane. She had to pick up scraps. Can you be found faithful in another man's vineyard? <laughs> Can you shovel somebody else's sheep dung? Can you vacuum and clean up behind somebody else? Come on, somebody. Can you pick up, my God, for years at a time behind somebody else? Can you do? Can you wash somebody else's car? Can you carry somebody else's bag? Come on, can you do these type of things, my God? Picking up scraps. Come on, can you pick up the leftovers after the big conference and the big revival? Everybody else that left, my God, and you the only one that left to set the chairs back up and clean up all the trash and stuff like that. Come on, you're picking up scraps. But understand that you're picking up purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. She was diligent. And I thank God for Ruth because as I read, my God, the book of Ruth, Ruth had a specific mindset that we need to adopt tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The woman of God had a disciplined mind. Yeah. She had laser focus. Mm -hmm. And she was determined, my God, not to separate mm -hmm. from her spiritual mother. I mean, her, 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 her mother-in-law. Because her mother-in-law was uncovering her, spirit, her spiritual mother as well. She refused to let anything separate her. She wouldn't even let hardships and trials. They was homeless. And she said, where you go, I go. Where you die, I die. She was determined not to let nothing separate her from Naomi. Diligence. Why is it that we so easily separate from God? Now, if this woman loved a female human being like that? We talking about God of our soul, the God of salvation, the God of the universe, the, the God that provides all knows, all heals, and all that. But why is it that we easily separate from God? Why is it that we easily quit? Why is it that we easily get so offended? Why is it that we quit reading? Why? These are just questions you need to ask. This is Bible study. This is not Sunday. So we don't need all the emotion. Ask yourself, why do I easily separate from God? Because you do not have, if that's you, uncompromised loyalty. It's a mindset. When you don't pray, it's because you don't have the mindset to pray. When you don't read your Bible on a consistent basis, because I know sometimes y'all might not get the chance to read it every day, but if you're not reading your Bible at least three or four times out of seven days, then you are not loyal. Uh, okay. Don't you know that work requires diligence? Diligence in small things brings honor. Way to write. Diligence in small things brings honor. Boy, I can't wait. To, if God give me a release, Sister Madeline, I can't wait. If this is the direction we're going, I got some great news. Going off for Christ is so blessed. Yeah. I'm going to prove it to y'all when God yeah. tell me to. Yeah. Proverbs 13, 4 says, lazy people want much but get little. But those who work hard will prosper. Mm -hmm. Lazy people want much but get little. Yeah. Now, let me share something with you. And I'm not trying to make nobody feel bad. And I'm just taking my time and flowing good. But if you are a Christian, and you come to church every Sunday and every Wednesday without a Bible, something is wrong. If you're not looking at your Bible on your phone, uh, on some type of tablet, and you're in the habit of coming inside the house of the Lord without a word of God, something is wrong with you. When you first start out, that's fine. I understand. You might not know no better. But over a period of time, within at least three months of this church, I give you two months, and you don't come to church with a Bible, ask yourself, what's wrong? I said, ask yourself what's yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. That you could come into the house of the Lord and take what I got to say. You don't want to take time to know what to say. Amen. 
Somebody needed to hear that. When I was incarcerated, I had the little Gideon Bibles that, you know, I kept it in my back pocket. Everywhere I still got it to this day, all these years. And I kept it because I know it in, in prison, you have many times where you have to wait on your lounge, you wait to eat, and so you have many times to read. Are you ashamed to carry your Bible? Some of you men, are you ashamed? I see many of you men walking to the church without a Bible. And you may say, Pastor, I don't have a Bible. Well, then see one of these men standing up there and telling you need a Bible, we'll get you a Bible, and don't come back up in this church without a Bible. You need a Bible in your hand. Because if you don't come in there with a Bible, that tells me you ain't reading your Bible at home. Amen. That's a diligent mind. We want everything to happen in 2019, but we ain't willing to pay the price to see it happen in 2019. We make all these old fake declarations, these fake promises, and all these new New Year's resolutions. Ain't willing to do nothing. Same old mindset. And frustrated three months into the year, and it looked like 2012, 13, 14. Ain't nothing changed in all them years. Come to church with a Bible. I hope that convicted you, because it should. Mm. Also, this woman of God was not only diligent, but she was righteous. Come on, write that down. Amalek fled. Watch this. A famine, but he and his sons all died, as I told y'all, outside of God's promised land. He had thought he was doing right. He thought he was doing the right thing. Oh, my God. He thought he was doing the right thing. Look at your neighbor and say, he thought he was doing the right thing. I'm going to do you, Lisa, since Dion is working. Let's do it again. He thought he was doing the right thing. Y'all need to think about what you just said. How many of you thought you did the right thing? Let me see your hands. See that? See, because one of the things God showed me, I don't want my passion to interfere with the substance and the principles. He thought Amalek, but he caused himself as well as his sons to die. Outside of God's will, yeah. promise. Who in my life got to suffer <laughs> while I remain the same? That's why, my God, I think that's number nine on the character formation, or number six or seven, but it deals with your thought life. He said he, he thought he was doing the right thing. Where your mind at tonight? Where your mind at tonight? He thought. The mind is a cold thing, church. Mm. He was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. It made sense. Boy, that show makes sense. I'm praying diligently. <laughs> We're praying diligently about this situation. Now, this, this situation that we have, this opportunity that we have. And it makes sense. But it's a God. It all makes sense. It every dot, dots, every T crosses. And it makes all the sense to the carnal mind. But is it God? The former 12 leaders kind of know what I'm talking about, but is it God? So some of the decisions that you got to make, is it God? It makes sense to you, but is it God? That might be something you might want to write down. Big, bold, is it God? But, but, but is it God? Oh, I know she look good, but is it God? Oh, he look good, but is it? This business plan sound good, but is it God? It makes sense, but is it God? It could be God, but is it God's timing? You can ask that self. You can put that too. It, it makes sense and everything lines up. Oh, my God. And it is for me, but it ain't time for me. Be careful. Be careful. This is why you and I got to have in our character uncompromised loyalty yeah. to God. God ain't going to let you get in trouble. God will allow you to bump your head if you want to do it your way. Yes, and then you got to spend seven more years in famine when you could have been in seven years of freedom. Oh, if I, I, this just make all the sense. Oh, God, let me get off of this. This make, this make all the sense, Brandon, but is it God? If I do this, I can see I can get ahead here. If I make this decision, if I get this credit card, I can rotate this and bring all that debt over here and do. Oh transfer this and transfer that. And 
I go get this car right now, and it's going to take my payment up three, four hundred dollars. But see, I'm going to go, I'm going to keep this car and pay it down. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep this car. We just start compromising. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get this car. It's brand new. I'm going to keep this car. I ain't going to trade it in. I'm just going to keep it. Six months later, you're already trying to trade it in. Uncompromised loyalty. Ruth had uncompromised loyalty. She was willing to die for God's purpose. She was willing to die, then be separated from her, her mother-in-law. Mm, mm, mm. It made sense, but it was ultimately a fatal decision. It made sense to the natural, but it was a fatal decision for the man of God to leave by the famine. Don't let trials and hardships push you out of purpose is what I'm trying to tell you. Don't die outside of God's promise for your life. Don't let problems in the marriage cause you to quit. Don't make, don't let promises, I mean problems between you and your children cause you to quit praying for them. Yeah. On, so My God, yeah. they might need to find them another That's place good. to stay, but that don't mean you keep yeah. praying for them. I can't get nobody to <laughs> Are you listening to me? But this was a fatal decision. Famine pushed him out of God's promise, and his family died. They stepped out of, outside of God's provision. As I taught y'all Monday, when you're not tithing, when the Bible says in the book of Malachi, this is biblical truth. When it says you're a curse, with a curse, that means you have removed yourself from God's protection. You are no longer, my God, submitted and covered by the kingdom. No longer submitted to and covered by the kingdom. You leave yourself open, pray. You leave all your family, your finances, and everything open to the devil. I see how some of y'all are looking. If you've been here Monday, you would understand. That's why things seem real grievous and hard. Because God said, there's a lot of things you can do. There's a lot of things I want to do, but I can't do. Because I can't trust you. With what the, if I bless you and put you in position, my God, to handle the things that God is putting you to handle... And, if, and finances start coming to you, you're going to squander it away. Luke 4, 15, like the prodigal son. You are leaking vessels. You can't hold nothing. He says, what you brought home, book of Haggai. He said, well, God said, what you brought home in the book of Haggai. He said, your pockets had holes in them. He said, I blew it away. And they couldn't understand. He said, you was too busy taking care of your house. You living in your panel house and you neglected my house. You neglected the house of the Lord. You was too concerned just about your house. Well, what about God's house? Does God's house matter? Well, he's God. He don't need our money. He sure don't need your money. He needs your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And wherever your money is, that's where your heart is. Straight up. Your loyalty, my God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Have we compromised in our finances? Now we're digging ourselves up out of a hole. It's okay. God going to forgive you. And he already have, and he still loves you. As a young widow in a foreign land, Ruth was very vulnerable. But Boaz heard how he, I mean, how she had stood mm, about Naomi and cautioned her to stay close to safety boundaries. Stay close to safety. The Bible says there's, there's safety in the multitudes. Safety. There's safety in the power of agreement. There's safety, my God, when you're walking with people and talking with people that is moving in the same direction you're moving in. There's safety, single women, my God, when the men of God, my God, it, it, when the person that you are considering dating, my God, my God, love God more than you love God. If you got to tell him to read his Bible, if you got to tell him to pray, if, if he know that you go to church and he, and, you been, and he ain't came not one time nor have he offered, you better run. Me and God got our own thing. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's your problem. Because, see, he's in control. And when he say, me and God got our own thing, God know my heart, and that's okay with you. You've been dating him and talking to him, and, and you calling him boo. I'm just trying to help you, ladies. You know what I'm saying? But yet, you got to ask him to come to church, and you have asked him. He still won't come. He's still justifying. That ain't you no more. Give God some glory. I can't get nobody to <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's real talk. You ought to be giving God some glory. And so, come on, y'all, to give God some glory. Amen. If he won't come to church, Joyce, that's a problem. Without you having to ask him. Sooner or later, men and women, you got to draw the line. 
When is enough going to be enough? When is you going to quit compromising? When are we going to quit selling, my God? When are we going to quit just selling for leftovers? As Sister Reed taught me, why, why do we got to continue to lower our standards? Why you don't raise your standards and make somebody come up to your standards? Hey, I'm trying to stay calm. Don't get me started. Well, quit lowering your standards. Quit compromising your standards and set some boundaries. Have some morals and principles about yourself. Learn how to keep them on lock until God sees you your boy ass. Quit opening yourself up to any and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Ruth said, I ain't got no dime, but I got my mother-in-law, and I'm going on. Yeah. I ain't worried about no man. Yeah. I'm going to die in purpose. Yeah. I'm going to die doing God's will. Yeah. I'm going to serve God. She wasn't worried about no man. Yeah. She was sold. I said, uncompromised loyalty yeah. to God. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Stay closely to safety. I hate to say it, my God, but many people, I hate to say this, and I'm not saying this out of pride, out of arrogance. Urgency. Many people have disconnected from this church and has died spiritually. I don't care what you see on Facebook. I can tell you some things about all this old God stuff they're putting out there, and it ain't what it professed to be or look to be. Some of you think that you can disconnect from God's house, and the Bible says you will surely die. If you disconnect John the 15th chapter from the vine, you will die. Hebrews chapter 10, 25 says, not to forsake, my God, the assembly of the believers. Not to forsake. Hebrews 10, 25. Quit telling yourself like all these fleshly, ungodly, professing Christians, I ain't got to go to church to be a Christian. The devil is a lie. You show me a person don't go to church, I'll show you a person that got a whole lot of sin in their life. You show me somebody that feel like they ain't got to go to church, I'll show you somebody who don't read, who don't pray, and who probably really ain't got no real relationship with God. Because if you got a real relationship with God, you're going to come out the dark, and you're going to come into the light. You want to be around brothers and sisters. You want to be around the safety of the mark. To. You want to be in the presence of the other saints, my God. You want to hear the testimonies of other people. You want to rejoice when others rejoice. You want to give God the glory when it's time to give God the glory. I don't know what time that you ain't got to go to church. Man, miss me with that. That ain't the Bible. There are people that have stepped out of God's boundaries and they have created their own rules. Lord have mercy. And when you remove yourself from safety, guess what? Anytime one person, my God, disconnect from the pack, my God, the animal, or the, the, the shooter got him. He said he didn't disconnect it, bam. She didn't disconnect it, bam. Because he, when you disconnect, my God, you start falling from a distance. You get, get disconnected. When you, when you a monster, oh, my God. When you a monster, people, man, the sheep, my God, they can't get to you. Because yeah. yeah. the sheep yeah. is protected sheep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sheep begat sheep. I can't yeah. get nobody to say nothing. But when you remove yourself from the sheep, you open prayer. Naomi understood, my God, that her purpose was connected to her mother-in-law. I mean, Ruth understood that her purpose was connected to her mother-in-law. Am I helping anybody so far? Stay closely, my God, to the field, within the fields that declare God's blessing over her. Boaz declared God's blessing. That's what he said in Ruth chapter 2, 11, 12. Boaz replied, but I know, but I also know about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. Boaz said, I heard how you left your father and your mother and your own land to live here among complete strangers. May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come, take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. He said, I have heard. I'm going to go up here and say this. God sits in heaven. When the children of Israel was being tormented in Egypt, the Bible says he heard their misery. He seen their misery and he heard their cries. So to some of you that feel like God may have forgotten you, God has heard. If you are in agreement with this community of believers on this consecration, all the cries, all the pleas that you have made unto the heavens, God has heard them. Not only have God heard them, God has seen them. And when it's time, he will release the angels to fulfill the promise in yeah. their life. Yeah. 
But see, you got to understand, you got to mix patience with faith. Patience and faith go hand in hand. You have to be, it takes, it takes patience to do the will of the Father. Many people have shipwrecked all type of ministers and so forth because they didn't have patience. They may have had the faith, but they didn't mix the faith with the patience. Ruth was patient in the midst of hardship, picking up scraps. She was patient. Still not knowing what's going to happen. But then Boaz showed up, the Kingsman Redeemer. Then her helpmate popped up on the scene. Now keep in mind, y'all, she wasn't worried about no man. She was just carrying on God's business. Uh, y'all need to stay with me now. Uh, she wasn't worried about no man. She was just carrying on. I'm trying to talk like, she was like Jackie. She was just carrying on God's business. See what I'm trying to say? And then, my God, because when you're carrying on God's business, God will cause people, y'all need to stay on, with me, somebody. when you're carrying somebody. on God's business. Yeah. See, that's why it's dangerous, my God, to be sitting in the house idle. Yeah. You're sitting in this church idle. That's dangerous. Because, see, you're being overlooked because you're idle. Ruth, my God, was found working. The man of God reminded her, my God, of her labor and her commitment, her uncompromised loyalty to her mother-in-law. She was trying to say, my God, here it is, the man of God has seen her. He just now pop up on the scene, but he has been watching. Don't you know, my God, your gifts will make room for you? Don't you know, my God, memorials will come up before the Lord? Don't you know somebody's watching you? Don't you know it's easy to hit a target that's not moving? This woman of God, my God, was working. I call it stumble. She stumbled right on up on her, Boaz. Because she wasn't sitting idle. <laughs> she was really operating in Proverbs 31. She was about her business, baby. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. She was also providing for her mother-in-law. Come on, somebody. Oh, she was getting it done, my God. And then this man, it's a series of events took place, my God. But the kinsman redeemer came, my God, and he found him working, being productive, not being idle, not being a busybody. Come on, somebody. Not gossiping, not lying, not getting envy, not jealousy. She ain't jealous of nobody. My God, she ain't putting nobody lying. You know what I mean? She ain't telling you one thing in your face and then lying behind your back. She wasn't doing none of that type of stuff. See, I go through all that old type of stuff. Come on, somebody. Oh, my. She wasn't doing none of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was operating with integrity. Yeah. Because remember, she already had a man made up that she was going to go on. <laughs> Amen, Sharon. She already had, that she was going to go on, my God, through hardship and everything. So, my God, all that stuff that's trying to distract you that we're talking about today, daughter, just carry on. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes when you're in God's will, ooh, y'all going to like this. When you're in God's will, here come the enemy. Here come distractions. Here come haters. Here come people, my God, that you think is your friend that's really jealous of you. That's why you got to be sensitive, my God, when you're birthing something yeah, because, yeah, my God, the wrong yeah. people are trying to get attached yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, they ain't for yeah, you. Yeah, they yeah. for what you can do. Yeah, and y'all yeah. missed that. They ain't for you. They for what you can do for them. And when you can't do nothing that's for them, they ready to break camp in the van. That's why you got to be careful. People will use you up, baby, and throw you away. That's why you got to be like your pastor. Don't be afraid to confront when they need to be confronted. If you don't like it, they'll go to the door, picture you rolling. But you're not going to use me. I promise you. See, she didn't get caught up in all that old mess. She didn't get caught up in all that. Ruth stayed faithful. And because of that, I want you to catch this principle. And because of that, my God, she got a great reward because she was carrying on business. She was operating with integrity. She had boundaries. She had principles. And the woman of God throughout the story, she never crossed the boundaries. She never stepped outside of her boundaries. She never stepped outside of purpose. She never stepped outside of covenant. She kept covenant intact. She never broke none of the principles, my God, that I'm talking about. Never! And she was a single woman. But God said, you've been found faithful. Let me give you some scripture. The word of God said, God shows himself faithful to those who are faithful. I said, God shows himself faithful. But can you trust him? With your faith, you better mix some patience with your faith. It takes patience, the word of God says, to do the will of the Father. When you ain't got no patience, you tell you, tell me, I got faith, I got faith, I got faith, my God. But then, my God, when the enemy come to test your faith, Come on, Minister Lenny. Faith ain't faith until it's tested faith. When your faith is being tested, God is trying to build your patience. It takes patience 
to do the will of the Father. Put point number three on the screen. Let me get out your way. There's safety in God's boundaries, as you see. Ruth stands out because she, con she continually made decisions that spoke of her trust in God. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. Team up, y'all, with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light, my God, live in darkness? Ruth had providence. Providence comes from living within God's boundaries, church. In the book of Ruth, we see God's hand in control of the situation she's faced. Watch this. God's timing and providence was perfect. An example was found in Ruth 122. Please write this down. Ruth 122. So Naomi returned to Moab accompanied by her daughter-in-law, Ruth, the young Moabite woman. They arrived in Bethlehem in late spring at the beginning of the barley harvest. God timed the arrival in Judah so that it was harvest time and she was able to find food. Matthew says, unbelievers worry about food and water and clothes. God pushed her, my God, right into his time in Brandon. And when she showed up on the scene, it was harvest time. Harvest time. Hallelujah. Harvest time. Yes, Lord. Harvest time. She showed up at the right time. She was working Picking up scraps, uncompromised loyalty, serving, not getting contaminated, not getting in other people's business, carrying on a great work, my God. And when she showed up where she was supposed to be, it was right on God's time. Thank you, Lord. When you allow God to order your steps, you will end up right in time. I said you will end up right in time. My God, I'm almost through. Boaz had come to the field. What about seeing the one? Yes, yes, yeah. Boaz had come to his fields, his fields. See, the thing about it, God had her working in her soon-to-be husband field. Oh, let me move on because time. God, 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 God. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I received that, Krista. She was, she, God had her working in her, her own field. But she had to start off picking up scraps, Rich. But she was picking up scraps in her own field. <laughs> because she was picking up scraps in her own field. I'm going to take that and work that. She's picking up scraps in her own field. Come on, somebody. She's picking up scraps in her own field, but she was picking up purpose in her own field. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? And while she was picking up purpose in position, my God, my God, carried on God's business, my God, here come to help me. Yeah. To enhance what she was already doing. Now somewhere where she's working, now she owns. That's how God is, woman of God, Kim. He, 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 you go from working it to owning it. <laughs> oh, oh, you go from working it to owning it. Somebody give God a hand. <laughs> Boy, that, amen, woman of God. See, 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 see. Ah, you go from working to owning something. Somebody better give God some glory. You can't see your... Let me get through. Let me get through. We might not understand our situation's life, but we must choose to trust God and that God knows what he's doing in our lives. We have to stop resisting God. Write that down. Stop resisting God. Let me get you out of here. Stop resisting God. That's heavy right there now. Stop resisting God. Keep your pen out because I'm going to close with this. I already turned my paper over. Give y'all some definitions from out of the book. Um, boundaries define us. They define what is me. Write that down. What is me? What is me? And what is not me? That is heavy right there. That's a sermon right there that's coming. What is me? And what is not me? <laughs> You got to know what is you and what's not you. Yeah. And when you know if it's not you, get out the way. Yes. 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 Come on, get out of people's business. Yes. You know that thing, God, they don't even concern you. That might get out the way. Yes. She got that book right there. She got the book right there. She trying to say amen. Amen. Get out of people's way. You complain about it. You know what I'm saying? Now you don't got it no more, but now you're complaining about it. You had it, but you didn't appreciate it, so now you want to complain about it. Mm. Let's look at this. We are not, we are not, my God, we are not.
for, we are not, for example, we are not responsible for other people's actions. Right. We are responsible to others. Yeah. We are not responsible for, but we are responsible to. to. Yes. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. See, you got to separate the four and the two. Four or two. Just to begin back there, interrupting my service. That's good. They in the flow. I appreciate that, though, because they reading. My God, you got to understand, my God, four and two. Them is two words. Four and two. It's important, my God. It's very important to determine what me is and what my boundaries of responsibility is. What me is and what my boundaries of responsibility is. Also, too, I don't even need my notes. And what your boundary of responsibility in with somebody. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. What your responsibility is and where your boundaries stop. Some of us has overstepped our boundaries. And now we all in God's business. Or we are staying in situations that God said you should have been left at a long time ago. You should be owning, but you're still working. Poverty mentality. You overstep the boundaries. Boundaries will keep you. What I liked about the story is I put this together. I've been shut in and working on this for two days. The woman of God had uncompromising loyalty. Those few last little points, I took that from the man of God's book, but the rest of that, my God, God birthed that in my spirit. The woman of God had uncompromised loyalty. She was willing to die before she's disconnect. Are you willing to die before you disconnect from God? What are you willing to pay the price to do? Hmm? What areas have you compromised in? What areas do you need God to bring up where it become the word uncompromised loyalty? Ruth ended up living like a true queen that she was already was, but she had to pay a price of hardship before she got there. And it's something that when you work in a, in a vineyard, a uh, number man's lay, uh, a vineyard, and now the very thing that you work in, it looks so like God has forgot about you. This, she, she looked like she was forgot about. She looked like she was forgot about. This is hard. I'm picking up scraps. Nobody's recognizing me. See, one thing I like about, 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 about Ruth and Naomi in the story is that she wasn't concerned about the opinions of people. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all need to stay with me, church. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Ruth was not concerned about the opinions of people. Her mother-in-law used to take care of her, yeah. but then God re- reversed it because she's the younger. And so, my God, when they went to this city, this town, she started laboring. And in the story, her mother-in-law could not understand how she was kept coming back day after day with so much spoil, as I use that word, so much. Because, my God, the man of God said, just keep leaving some down. Leave extra. Don't take it all. That's favor. Less today's prayer focus was wisdom, statue of favor. And so when favor's on your life, my God, instead of leaving five, leave ten now. My God, every two steps, drop ten more. <laughs> every two steps, drop ten more. My God, you know what I'm saying? The woman of God found favor because she was in position. When you're in position, the favor will meet you when you're in position. You ain't got to cause no problem to stay in the river. Uncompromised love. Because she had personal boundaries. She was able to receive. And she worked in something that was already hers. The word of God says, my thoughts is not your thoughts and my words is not your words. See what I'm trying to say? And so it was so beautiful how the story turned out. And I thank you, Krista. That was revelation. Krista, this gave, she gave us that. She was working in something that was home. Is it possible that you might be renting something that could possibly be your own? How are you taking care of that rent house that you don't own right now? For is their name being on it. But God can give you so much favor like he did Ruth.